Which celebrity is not as nice as they seem? <laughs> Luke Bryan is a POS cursed at my crew constantly. Post Malone was super fucking cool though, and took the time to thank all of us stagehands. Post Malone does seem like a real decent person. Posty is a sweetheart, his episodes on the H3 podcast are so sweet. I'm friends with Post's brother, so I got to meet and chill with him, he was just the sweetest goofiest dude. Was late to his own show because he wouldn't stop signing autographs outside of the venue beforehand. <laughs> Sorry to speak ill of the dead, but Winnie Houston used to frequent a place I tend to bar at. Would give me dirty looks, like I was trying to steal her man, whenever I delivered a drink that Bobby ordered. And I'm not even grave looking enough to be a threat. It's my job. Also tried, repeatedly, to smoke at the bar. We had just passed no smoking laws in Georgia. And they were no joke at the time. The cake topper was consistently tipping $3 on a $94 tab, as well as a $300 tab. She was the worst. God rest her soul. I want this on my tombstone. The woman had issues, and was emotionally damaged. She was in a lot of pain, as are most of these celebrities who lash out at people. Not excusing it, but they're still only human. I know I'd probably be a terrible celebrity. <laughs> um. In light of recent events, this is even more interesting. I watched Ja Rule kick a production assistant down a flight of stairs. Context edit. I was security for the MTV Beach House in the summer of 2002. Ja Rule and a group of others were upstairs in the green room of the Beach House. It was originally a lifeguard station that they converted, and the green room had a very small and tight winding staircase. The PA brought up a bottle of generic water to Ja and crew, but it was the wrong water. He yelled at the PA, and when he turned around to go get him the right water, Ja kicked him in the back of the legs, and he went down the stairs. I was stationed at the front of the house and heard yelling and a bit of commotion, then a flood of water bottles, followed by a PA come rolling down the stairs. I feel like the whole denial of any wrongdoing in the fire Festival incident backs up his assolery. Or the fact he's trying to do it again. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld came into a restaurant I bartended at for an interview, magazine. He was a regular for us. When he came in, he'd act like someone of his caliber wants to eat as soon as he can and duck out. When people notice him, he'd wave and keep it pushing. No one ever bothered him. Because everyone knew him from the neighborhood. On the particular day he comes in to do his interview, he tells his server, the same girl who always serves him, to fuck off when she comes to do her how's everything going for your round. She'd only come up that one time after the food was dropped off. The interview stopped there. Interviewer got up and left. Seinfeld throws up his hands and leaves shortly after. Nothing appeared to be off before, during or after in terms of his behavior. It took everyone by surprise including Ron Howard who just finished his meal. I had a front seat to this entire ordeal. I hope including Ron Howard who just finished his meal makes it into every story. Weinstein confessed to the rape and sexual assault of several people, including Ron Howard who just finished his meal. <laughs> George Clooney isn't an arrogant or egotistical prick in real life. My brother bumped into him on a bus without knowing who he was, they introduced themselves to each other, talked about their plans for the day, made small talk, wished each other well. My brother was, for a brief period, on a first name basis with George Clooney. Haha <laughs> this reminds me of one of my old teachers. He would always tell us about how George Clooney made him hot chocolate backstage of someplace. Sounds pretty dope to me. I am trying to think of a situation in which George Clooney would find himself on a bus. Genuine wondering, while very much a bus, not quite a bus, by the sound of it was one of those hotel shuttle type deals. So only people who were also at this obscenely nice hotel would also be on it. Knowing what kind of trips my folks take, this isn't quite 1% or a level of money trips, it's more like 2 to 3% or, still obscene, but still wildly above what most people will ever imagine affording. Well, all I can say is I met Mark Hamill at a deli, and he was so damn cool, kind and generous. I asked for a picture and he happily obliged, I'm on the tall side, 6'5", and when I went to lean down to get in the photo he said no leaning down, and instead got on his tippy toes. True Jedi Master. I read Mark Hamill and I got a little scared there. Thank god. Damn man don't mention him here lmao I was so scared that Mark was a monster or something. PewDiePie. <laughs> Jamie Kennedy 2002, I won a trip to Miami for some contest tax had after I clicked an internet banner, yeah, they work, but also I had to pay $1200 in taxes. They set up a house party at Jamie Kennedy's house, and when I approached him he gave me a sneer and walked away. Conversely, Seth Green, who was also there, was awesome. His manager or whatever she was started to turn me away thinking I wanted an autograph, when all I wanted was to say hi. He heard me explain and turned around to shake my hand and talk for a few seconds, gave a bow, and continued his conversation that I inadvertently interrupted. Man, I've barely heard of Jamie Kennedy, and yet everything I have heard is terrible. But I do know someone who's worked with Seth Green, and they also had nothing but praise for him. So glad. I've been a fan of his for so many years. My wife worked with Kate Beckinsale. Apparently she is a raging bitch. She also worked with Terry Crews, and I met him a few times, and he is every bit as sweet and positive as he seems. Terry Crews and his wife is amazing according to my parents. They used to go to the same church as the Crews. The Crews would come once a year to this church in Michigan, Christmas, meet all their fans. Anyways, my mom met him said he was super nice. There is no chance Crews is that good at faking being such an awesome guy. Same as Keenu I auditioned for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire a few years ago when he was hosting. All of his producers loved that man dearly. They said he's exactly the same in person as he appears on screen. Solid dude. <laughs> Terry Crews held open a gate for me at Disneyland while I was struggling to get through with a stroller. He was holding his sleeping kid. We were just too tired dads after a day at Disneyland. 
I've always held him in high regard after that. Hell of a guy. It amounted to about 5 seconds, but that was all I needed to know. Honestly Terry Crews is one of the few celebrities that you just can't say anything bad about, he is just an extremely kind dude. Terry loves this comment. More than yogurt? <laughs> Frank Sinatra once called my grandfather an asshole at a blackjack table just for sitting there. Sinatra had an infamously short temper. Well he was a raging drunk lol I just finished reading Killing Kennedy by Bill O'Reilly, and in it there was a part about Kennedy telling Sinatra he wasn't going to stay at Sinatra's when he was visiting California, and in response, Sinatra trashed the concrete helipad he had built for the presidential chopper with a sledgehammer. I used to waitress at a restaurant that had some celebrity clients. This was years ago. Here's the rundown. Larry David. Super nice great tipper. Roger Waters. Very nice, good sense of humor. He was a regular and everyone loved him and his wife. Alec Baldwin. Asshole, sweaty in person. Kim Cattrall. Really nice, had a really hot young guy with her. John McEnroe. Pretty rude, but he had a million kids with him so I guess he gets a pass? I know you're legit because you described Baldwin as sweaty. Work with him and every time he come in for the day the studio would be freezing. Apparently it is demand. To keep the sweat to a minimum. I buy it, he just looks like a greasy dude. A few years ago I was with a co-worker friend, and Demi Lovato was at an event near where we worked. Now I did not and still don't care about her, but my friend was so over the moon for her and went on about how she had her book, how Demi got her to stop cutting, and so on. Demi walks our way, and my friend starts to say things like oh my god, you got me through my depression, and Demi made a face, rolled her eyes and walked around us. It broke my friend's heart. She never mentioned Demi after that. Damn. Edit. That part really resonated. To have the person that pulled you from your dark place be ripped away from you like that, that's big hurt. I get that maybe Demi doesn't have the capacity to handle other people's shit, if she can hardly handle her own. She could've handled herself better. But the real kick in the dick is that void that person is left with. Snow Thought product is a big one for me, and if I ever met her and she did some shit like that, I don't know how I'd fill that snow-shaped void in my life. I just really feel for this girl. Edit 2. I am not the food blogger. <laughs> Chad Kruger from Nickelback. My buddy was at the Roxy watching some live music. Chad was in front of him. Someone else yells Nickelback sucks. Chad thinks it's my buddy, turns around and punches him out. My friend wakes up to find out he got punched out by Chad Kruger, which is the equivalent to someone urinating on your ego, but also a hilarious story. Long story short he got paid out through private litigation because Nickelback was about to go on tour, and Chad couldn't get stuck in Canada fighting the case or worse. Edit. Almost forgot the best part. When my buddy came to apparently he said but I like Nickelback. Sounds worth the punch to get paid lmo. My friend used to be his roommate in Vancouver before he was famous, and he was a dick even then. <laughs> Alicia Keys. I worked security at a local concert venue for over 10 years, and she was hands down the meanest artist that I rubbed elbows with. One night, I was asked to stay late and work a meet and greet in the catering trailer after her show. I stood next to Alicia and her assistant at the time, guessing 2006, while she met a group of fans one by one. Each fan gave her gifts flowers and had roughly 30 seconds to say hello. Being so close, I was able to hear every word she said to her assistant, and it wasn't pretty. She basically bad mouthed the entire group she had something negative to say about almost everyone's outfits and appearance. Considering how long ago it was, here is to hoping that she has grown up since then. She also had an affair with her husband Swizz Beats, who was still married to his wife at the time, and she just had a baby. Eventually Keys defended her relationship with Beats by telling Jet, they were apart for some time before we ever got together, that doesn't matter to those who take pleasure in trying to knock others down, there's no need to fight what's not true. Mashonda told a different story over the years in Twitter rants, open letters, and interviews about she did not feel separated from her husband, because they had just had a baby and were still in a sexual relationship. <laughs> Jeff Daniels, the guy from Dumb and Dumber. He lives right next door to my cousins and is very disliked in their community. He always assumes everyone will mob him and ask for autographs or whatever, so he won't interact with anyone. He's lived next to my cousins for at least 15 years and has only talked to them once or twice. My favorite anecdote is that my grandpa once sat next to him in a bar and tried to strike up conversation. Jeff Daniels was a dick and left. The bartender told my grandpa not to worry about it, he just doesn't like to talk to fans, and my grandpa was like wait who the fuck was that? It turned out my grandpa had never heard of Jeff Daniels, he was just trying to be friendly. Gramps much more interested in Jack Daniels at the bar. I bet he doesn't know Jack either. Of course not. Paul's where it's at. <laughs> Bill Nye. Granted in the last few years he's revealed himself as a self-centered jerk, but I am reminded of a story from a podcast a few months back. A girl was working retail at a clothing store, and Bill Nye walks in. He ends up at a register and she says something to the tune of hi Bill, I just wanted to say I appreciate what you did for getting kids into science, I grew up watching your show. Bill replies, and look where that got you. This is the first comment that's dropped my jaw and I've been reading for almost an hour. God damn. If you're surprised, then you're not from the Seattle area. Everyone I knew who met him had a horror story, including one of his former next door neighbors, so I pretty much knew what to expect. About as far away as I could be without being around Florida man. LOL. <laughs> All I can say is that James Corden has come into my work three times, I've politely said hello to him, not in a hello there Mr. James Corden from TV and movies kinder way, but just a general polite customer service hi there, sir, welcome way, and of those three times, he said hello back zero times. 
Not even a smile, just a quick neutral face glance. I have never heard a good tale about James Gordon. Fame went right to his head. Hearing this makes me miss Craig Ferguson and Jeff Peterson even more. Craig Ferguson was excellent. Craig was the best. I feel it went Carson Letterman Ferguson for reinventing late night. I don't think we were ready for Craig he was way ahead of his time. In the 90s Michael Jordan marketed himself as the role model basketball player for kids, while Charles Barkley, who was kind of a troublemaker, famously told kids he was not their role model. Now when you hear stories about the two players you realize that MJ was is a gigantic asshole, while Barkley is one of the nicest men in sports. Edit. Just wanted to say it totally warms my heart to hear that it seems like everyone has a story about meeting Charles Barkley and him being a class act. I met him at a celebrity golf tournament, and not only was he hilarious, he was also constantly stopping the game to talk with fans and take pictures. Somebody in his entourage later told us he had been up partying the night before until about 4 in the morning and was very hungover, but he never dropped a smile and genuinely seemed to enjoy everybody. That guy is one of my gold standard celebrities. It's interesting how people misinterpret Barclays I'm not a role model as he didn't want people to model their behavior on professional athletes. Especially young black kids, he didn't want them to think that they could only be successful in sports. His I'm not a role model was meant as a message that role models should be leaders and educators, people who have gone to school and are making a substantial contribution to society, rather than just sports. It's not surprising at all to hear that he is a very friendly and super cool guy. He's a very humble and respectful person. I met Tila Tagila outside a club in Vegas, 2015. She kept staring at the bag of peanuts I was eating, but she wouldn't say anything. I offered her a handful of peanuts, and she became very docile, eating out of my hand for a few minutes, while my friends joked and took pictures. Suddenly she bit my finger hard, right down to the bone, causing me to drop the bag of peanuts which she grabbed as she scampered away. I was bleeding really bad, but the bouncer just laughed and said it happens every Saturday night. That, my friend, was a squirrel. You were drunk. It was a squirrel. No, it was Dila. I was in a movie theater in Chicago, and she managed to squeeze her way in under the fire escape door and was eating the popcorn people dropped. An usher tried to shoot her out with a broom, and she started screaming and running around under the seats. My wife and I stepped outside for a cigarette a couple of months ago, and the dog followed. As soon as I lit up I saw Tila on all fours getting ready to attack my dog. I shoot her away with the broom. I don't even know if he seems nice, but Sheila Beuth is an asshole. Work security for a company that does movie screenings and security details for actor that come to do Q&As. Worked with him on his movie Man Down, and we all walked out on him and left him on his own. He was very verbally abusive and constantly yelled and cussed us out. So we said fuck it and left. I attended a Man Down screening and Q&A. He seemed so kind and genuinely invested in the film and the difficult themes it presented. But at the same time he seemed very uneasy and ready to lash out at any second. He didn't appear to be a stable person. Not sure if you were at that event, but an audience member, inappropriately, asked one of the writer-producers to go into detail about his own PTSD experience, and she a snapped. He swore left and right and told the guy it was insane to ask the question, especially because the audience member was some sort of military recruiter. While I agreed with what she has said, it's scary to think that's the norm. <laughs> Dane Cook is a huge asshole. My uncle and I were in a crew to move some stage equipment for one of his stand-up shows. There was a rule that if anyone actually saw him they were not supposed to try and talk with him or even look him in the eye. We were actually told that by management. One of our crew who was working for him tried to stop him behind stage and ask for an autograph, and Dane Cook had them immediately fired and escorted off of the premises. On the flip side of the coin, we worked a show for Taylor Swift, and she bought everyone donuts and fried chicken with her own money, and came back to do a meet and greet, and to tell everyone that they were doing a good job. She really did seem like an all-around good person. Fuck Dane Cook though. I would never work for him again if it ever came up, just because he seems like such a complete ass hat. To tack onto the T-Swift thing. After her 1989 tour wrap she took her entire 125 person tour on a vacation to the Great Barrier Reef to show her thanks for a successful tour which was at the time I think the biggest on the road. I have met her once in passing and she really is a great person, no matter how much shit the media will bring up about her dating life. <laughs> Christian Bale was notorious for going off on someone while shooting Terminator Salvation. Bale looked like a complete asshole and ouch when he cursed out threatened to have fired some guy trying to help out on set. But after the incident Bale came out and apologized, saying he was trying to summon an air of madness for his role as John Connor and has a lot of shame in how he treated the co-worker. Also after the incident, numerous actors and directors have come out and said how much they enjoy working with Bale and that his dedication to roles is inspiring and that the incident didn't reflect how he normally works with other people. So his script is kinder flipped. He was definitely perceived as some huge asshole, but in reality he sounds like a legend dude to work with. Why doesn't anyone ever comment of the fact that he did that whole tirade with an American accent? The dude is super Welsh. Edit. I stand corrected, born in Wales. However raised in England. My favorite bit of the entire rant is the pause he puts in when he yells. After this me and you are done professionally. Like, oh hey, we can still totally play racquetball on weekends though. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. I need to stay vague to protect a friend's identity, but he runs a high-end travel outfit that basically does arrangements for the super rich in a nice tropical location. So Stallone stayed at a very swanky resort. He checks out there's poop in the tub. They let it slide because it's slide. Next visit more poop in the tub upon checkout. This time, they warn him not to do it again. Final visit more poop and permanent ban from resort. 
Edit 1. So Sly's scat gets me my first gold. I am strangely honored. Thanks. Edit 2. For those who are saying this isn't true. I honestly don't know. Simply relaying a story from what I judge to be a pretty reputable source that was told to me about 10 years ago. I'm unhappy that this forced me to Google Sylvester Stallone poop, but I did end up finding this. I've heard about a certain cough fetish he allegedly has since I was a kid. Always thought it was bullshit. Turns out it's you mansion. Oh wow, confirmation? I thought I imagined hearing about this because I was pretty young, and this seemed too bizarre. From what I can remember many years ago from some lady assistant, he has had a bedroom below a bathroom and a house of his. When guests were over and used this restroom, he would go to the below bedroom and lay down. The ceiling is see-through. <coughs> Will Ferrell. When filming Talladega Nights he dined at the Charlotte restaurant with some of the production crew, including John C. Riley. Apparently, whenever Will was addressed by the waitress he would refuse to look or speak to her. Instead, he would look at someone else and say tell the girl I'd like this. John was apparently mortified and tried to overcompensate by being extra nice to the staff. Broke my damn heart to find this out. He visits a particular ski town in Colorado quite often. I've never heard anything bad about him from those who met him. However, they do say he is very quiet and tries to keep the lowest profile possible. I met him at a charity event, I was working in sports, and he came to raise money for a local hospital with a bunch of other celebrities, and he was doing similar stuff, but it was a total bit. Would you tell your mom to stop staring at my face? And he would make that about to cry Will Ferrell face. He also did a lot of Buddy the Elf stuff. It was hilarious. He also did the same thing when they were watching a game, telling people, even people who were just walking by, to tell the lady he wanted this or that. Maybe they didn't take it as a bit, and that's why John felt like he should overcompensate? Or maybe he was just having an off night? I really don't want to believe Will Ferrell is a dick. Tim Allen. He came into a coffee shop I worked at, and he was very very rude to me and the customers. I didn't recognize him at first, he looks older and had kind of a beard growing, and he had caught me off guard, so when I asked his name for the order he said seriously. Tim. Very arrogantly. Then it hit me who he was, and I got a little flustered and forgot that he had ordered a breakfast sandwich and repeated his order back. Okay so just a latte and the K-cups for you? And he said wow we are on a roll this morning, aren't we? No I asked for the ham and Swiss too. So I wrote the bag and apologized and finished the order. There was a customer in the store who was so excited that Tim Allen was there, and he asked for a picture with him. Yes, I know it is probably annoying to be repeatedly asked for pictures in public, but honestly that's a consequence of having your face in the movies. In the picture, customer was so excited to get his picture taken that he came and showed us baristas, Tim's face was so pissed and blurry, because Tim couldn't stand still long enough to take the picture, even after saying yes to it. Sorry I didn't recognize you. You've aged horribly. Tim Allen was arrested for trafficking over 650 grams of cocaine. Tim proceeds to blame it all on 21 of his friends, and subsequently only did 5 years. I always expected that he'd be a gigantic asshole. Edit. Sentenced to 5 years, served to. <coughs> Andy Griffith would shoot at you if you trespassed on his property. My grandpa lived nearby and said that Andy was always shooting at people. Nobody fucks with Matlock, nobody. Wow. Wow wow wow. I knew Andy Griffith from watching the Andy Griffith show reruns, and my mom was obsessed with Matlock, but I never put it together that they were the same man. There was even episodes of Matlock with Don Knotts, played Barney Fife and Eggs, where they were old friends. Pretty cool. Aw, that's actually kinder sweet. Thank you very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and like this video, tell me what you dislike or love about this video so please comment below and hit the bell icon so you're notified anytime a new video is released. This is a Wecromedia production.